Are these your race skis? Yeah. Are they? Yeah. I got these like mid season. I only have one set. Got it. So I don't take these ones for skiing. What are the bevels? Uh, one and three. Uh-huh. Do you like tuning your skis? Uh, it's better now because I don't have to tune my brother and sister's skis. Ha. Ah. I hear you're up pretty late tuning skis a lot. Oh, yeah. Not as much now. Because usually Hogan will come out and help me. But... You take it off some sidewall? Yeah, so it makes it a little easier to work with the edge. Is a sidewall tool something you think everybody should have? No. Okay, why? Uh, you can mess up the sidewall pretty bad. Okay. I, I got it this, I only got it this year, but I used to take it to the shop to get it done. All right. So, so that's a pretty advanced maneuver. Yeah. What skis did you practice on? Uh, my dad ran over a set of skis with the truck before when we loaded them up, so I practice on those ones. Why don't you just show what you're doing here? I'm just clamping in the uh, file to my three degree file guide. And you want to make sure you have a, a certain degree and you know what degree your skis are tuned at. And just don't hold the stone along the ski because that can ruin the edge. So get a file guide. And a nice strong clamp so it doesn't come off. So you use the file and then you use the Evo? I usually don't use the file, but they needed it today since they were a little rougher. Ah. I skied them probably eight or nine times. So I'll only do a few passes with the file and then I'll go with the Evo. And then if they're really, they still have a good burr on them out hand stone them. So when you say they're rougher, you're talking about burrs on the edges. Yeah, yeah. burrs and chips. It's Got like it. Rock. So this is the Evo? Yeah. Okay, this is your protective gear you usually yeah. wear, huh? Good. Now what are you doing? Uh, I'm putting on my diamond stone and I like to put it in the water. Okay. And what do you use the diamond stone for? Uh, this just helps make that burr even smaller so it glides a little better. And I used to only have hand stones. The Evo helps a lot but you don't need it. Got it. So what's the Coarseness of so your stone. So this is the medium. Okay. When they give you a ceramics, they give you a number, but this is the coarse. You can feel it's a little rougher. Then this is even finer than the coarse, and then this is the finest of my hand stones. I think I have one finer on the Evo, but I like the hand stone better to finish it off. And I just like to make sure they're nice and clean, so they take away the edge. I used, I let Lisa Ling Hogan use them once and they got wax all over them. Uh oh. Yeah, it was not fun to clean off. No sharing your tools. Uh uh. I do the fine stone to make that burr even finer. So would you, what's some advice that you might have for the average person who wants to get into tuning their own skis? Uh, don't get really high end equipment at first. You can work your way up to that, but just get your simple stones and your file guide. I have what's called a roto brush, and that's basically a brush that spins really fast to get all the fine wax out of the ski. But you can just get hand brushes and they're tons cheaper. You don't necessarily need a table, 
But if you're gonna be tuning like on trips or at races, I would recommend getting a portable table. I just got one this year. And then keep your scrapers sharp if you can. How do you sharpen your scrapers? Uh, I use a file or, yeah, I use a file. I'm trying to, or I'm gonna get one of the uh, scraper sharpeners that sharpens it really good. And what you're doing right now with the with the files, kind of saving your Evo, is that right? Yeah. Yep. And it's just taking away the uh, coarser grits take away more material than the finer ones. So this is taking away a lot more material than the uh, fine stone does. And the Evo takes away quite a bit of material because it spins fast. Do you ever take a st uh, dummy with you up on the hill in case your edges are too sharp? Yeah. Do you, yeah? I have one in my ski bag and then I have one in my coat pocket. I usually don't need to gummy stone them, but it's just nice to have. Especially if you're a recreational skier and you're just skiing bumps and you get a sharp, sharp tune and it's a little too grippy, you can just run that gummy stone around, along it. So you're going to do two sets of skis yeah. today? Eight edges. Eight edges. How long does that usually take? Uh, it depends. I have them tuned okay. So are you getting these prepped for a particular event? Yeah, I'm getting them prepped for the Vail qualifier for U14s. So they're cool. GSL usually pretty icy. One down. Yeah. Three more to go. <laughs> How was it when you tuned my skis? They were good. They were dull. Yeah. Yeah. They were really dull. You did. I could like run my palm along them and not get cut. They're coaches skis, yeah. Wilson. You did such a good job. Thank you. Wow. I got on them and I, I'm a, I'm a pretty tough critic when it comes to ski tune with my skis. Yeah. I was impressed. I bet it's nice to have the control of tuning your own skis yeah. and not leaving that up to somebody else and not being disappointed with the tune you get. Is that right? Oh yeah. Last year I gave my skis to the shop and I was pretty disappointed. Well, you know, when you're at your level of racing, you need a high performance, a, a high performance tune and you've learned how to do that. Yeah. It goes along with it. Yeah. It's part of the job in becoming a ski racer. <laughs> And I've been teaching him in Laceville. What's next? Waxing. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to put some wax on my skis so they glide a little better. What are you doing with your phone? I am looking at the weather. So there's different types of wax. You can buy an all temperature wax, but for racing we use like special temp wax. So I have like stuff for like really warm snow and then I have stuff for like cold ice almost. So it's supposed to have a high of 40 and it doesn't tell me the low. High of 40. So five is like for really, really, really cold stuff. Seven is for warm, warmish snow, and then six is we in Colorado we usually stay in between six and seven, but since it's been a really cold winter this year, we've been using five. And in like Mount Hood, if you go to a summer camp, you're gonna put on eight <laughs> since that's warmer. So Wilson, remind everybody how old you are. 13. Okay. Got it. And you have been practicing tuning your skis for about how long now? Uh, 
three or four years. Okay. Probably, or no, probably it was last year actually that I started. Like really intensive. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was like watching my dad tune when I was like first year U12, but then I started tuning when I was a first year U14. Okay. So there's supposed to be a low of 20, but that's the air temp. So we gotta think about how cold the snow is gonna be. I think I'm gonna use six and then maybe put in a little seven. So what are you thinking about the snow temp versus the air temp? How are you kind of calculating that? The air temp's gonna be, I like to say anywhere between 10 and, and I like to say anywhere between like five and 10 degrees colder. So this has the air temp as 38 and 20, so the snow's probably going to be around 10. And it has, you want to make sure that you burn your wax or melt your wax at the temperature that it says, or else it'll start smoking and it won't cook as, or it won't not soak into your base as good. So what are you setting your So this one point? says to burn it at 155 Celsius. So they have mine roughly set to that. And while that warms up, you want to make sure that you have a clean base before you put the wax in. So like all those metals that got into it when you're tuning don't stay in there. So I just take my rag and I wipe it down. And then just, I like to run my brass brush over it and get all that gunk out. So tell me real quick, what are the different brushes you have? So this is my brass brush. This is my horsehair brush. And the brass is probably my thickest, stiffest brush. And then this one's a little less stiff than the brass. And then this one's even softer than them all. Okay. And I have the same set in my roto brush. Brass horsehair. And then I like to just wipe this heat out one more time. And then, before you put your wax on, you're supposed to take your wax and rub it into the ski base. This is cold. I'm not sure what this does, but... That's what you've been told. Yeah. And you don't want to press too hard. This stuff isn't necessary. Then why do you do it? Someone told me it works better. Okay. Then you take your wax, got your iron up to temp, and then you just drip it in. When your iron's too hot, the wax starts to smoke and crackle and it kind of cracks when you put it on the base. For a race you want to get the wax in the base and the iron just soaks it in there a little better. To get a really good clean on it you do what's called a hot wax where you heat the wax, you put the wax on, you keep it hot and then as soon as you put it on you take your scraper and scrape it off. And that usually gets all of the stuff out of there. Are all vices created equal with the vice? No. They're not. What, what are some thoughts on vices? So these Swix vices are pretty nice. They got the middle one. So when you scrape it, you can tighten it down so your ski's not going like that. Then it has the two end ones. And in there is where you put your skis mm -hmm. when you do the edges. Yeah. And then these Swix ones, they go up. And they do like that if you want to tune your skis at a side angle. Do you use that? A little bit. Uh huh. I think you're doing a good commercial for Swix here, Wilson. Oh, yeah? May maybe you'll be hearing from Swix. Yeah. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wax. Ski racers get a lot of ski tuning gear. You gotta, you gotta buy it. It gets expensive, doesn't it? Yeah. It's 
It's an stones, investment. Some wax. Okay, so what? you want to finish in one, instead of scrubbing like this, you want to finish in one long, continuous thing. Nice. What's uh, the next ski tuning piece of equipment that's on your wish list, Wilson? Uh, probably get a file sharpener and maybe a new set of stones and then replace one of the stones for my Evo. You don't want to clip your skin when you're ironing it because when the heat and the clamp ski, it just doesn't, I don't know exactly what it does, but it's not good for the ski. Oh, I have to clean this. This one's not quite as dirty as the other one was. Earlier we didn't talk about your base bevel. You were doing your side bevels. How do you set your base bevel? I don't mess with that. I usually have the shop set it. Okay. But I have the tools to mess with it, and if I need to, I will. Okay. But I usually just take that to the shop. So is that something that, for you, is just going to take more practice? It's going to take more practice and a little more skill and... Yeah. yeah. I could do it, just I just don't like to. Got it. Do you have a favorite part of ski tuning? Like a, uh, in terms of the... Probably the... brushing because that means I'm close to being done. <laughs> nice answer. <laughs> and when you hear it sizzle, it's probably a little too hot. So I turned it down a little bit. So then back there behind you is the first ski you waxed. And yeah. So when will you scrape that ski? Uh, I like to let it sit for, like if I'm just doing a quick, probably 15 minutes, but since this is for my race, I'll probably let it sit for like 45 minutes. And while I'm letting it sit, I will tune those skis and eat dinner and do something like that. Mm -hmm. And tell people why you wait that 45 minutes. So the wax, the base absorbs the wax and it just sits in there. You got to see how the, how the, ba the, yeah, the wax is just sinking in the pores of that. Yeah, base. And so that's it? what your brush is. Your scraper is to get the bulk of the wax off, and then your brush is to get. If you look at the ski, they have like a little grain in them almost, and that brush is to just get those uh, little pieces of wax that are still in that grain that the scraper can't get. So these are done, and I'll let them sit for 45 minutes, roughly. And these are your slaloms. Yeah. What do you like better, slalom or GS? Uh, I probably like slalom better than GS, but I like Super G the best. Do ya? Did you expect yourself to say that last year? No. What changed? Uh, I just got more confident in Super G. Did you get some good training? Yeah. Did ya? One thing you didn't mention to us, Wilson, yeah. is how and why are you using this water with your diamond stones? Uh, to make them glide a little better and to clean them. Okay. You gonna help your brother, Hogan? Yeah. You are? What are you Sadly. gonna do? Sadly. Sadly, what are you gonna do? Scrape. All right. It's supposed to be a little warmer on Saturday, so I'm mixing a little bit of my warmer wax with my cooler wax. So hopefully it gives me the ideal wax. Okay, I'll let those sit for 45 minutes. And then we can get my roto brush.
This is a roto brush. And you take your drill. And this one's the brass, which is that brass brush, the Corsus. Put that on there. And then you just take that down along the ski instead of using your hand brush. Has it been 45 minutes? Uh, it's probably been more than that. The longer the better. I'm gonna let my GSE sit until tomorrow night or Saturday night just so that wax, because I'm racing slow on the first day. Thank you. Somebody who doesn't know anything yeah. What do you have to tell them? Make sure when you get this bulk wax off, you're only pushing one way. And you want to push from tip to tail because that's the way the ski moves down the hill. So you don't want to pull like this. You want to get a thinner scraper because it's a little easier to push. And it goes through it a little better instead of this one where I can't even really bend it. But this is where that scraper sharpener comes in and is really nice, but I would not recommend getting that if you're just gonna tune your skis four times a year. Okay, are you using a metal scraper, Hogan? Yeah, no. Nope, plastic. The thing with the metal is you'll scrape and you'll be pushing like this and you'll go too deep and then you'll pull some of your base away. But this is really good if I have fresh P-Tex on. I usually take my pocket knife, cut that off and then I scrape it with this. And then I put a layer of wax over it wax the ski and then I hit it with this and that usually gets rid of it all. This looks a little interesting. Oh what yeah? Hogan left here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is usually where I have to help him. He's learning. Yeah. It's hard to scrape. Especially if it's a cold wax. Yeah, once you have it good enough, what? We'll brush it out. Uh-huh. And like you can kind of see where like the grain is and the little wax that's still left in it. You can still kind of see the wax because it's kind of shinier than mm -hmm. this. So usually I can get it out with the brush, but then somewhere it's a little thick in some spots still. It's getting a lot out of there. Yeah. And sometimes there will be like little, little wax and like wax balls along the edges. So this scraper has like a little built-in corner and you just take it and run it down the edges. Like this. And then once we do that brush and make sure there's no more wax on it, we take the roto brush and with this one, you want to make sure that it's spinning the right way. Because if we're doing it like this, it's throwing the wax this way. So like if we scrape, we want to push it tip to tail. And with this one, you don't really want to go like this. Because it's brass, you just want to push out. Okay, same goes for the hand brush. Usually you just want to go like this. With this one, it's it's not recommended, but you can go like that. And then once you're not getting much of that little like the wax, you want to you can switch brushes. Kind of like it's kind of like stones where you get to that smaller and smaller grit, but instead you get to a softer and softer brush. Uh, you're going to have to finish it. But I like to go hand brass, drill brass, hand, a little rougher one. And 
and then I go. Worst hair. Drill brush. It's time for dinner. It is? Thank you. And with this one, you still want it to throw the wax that way. But this one, you're, it's okay to go with this. You're really buffing it out, aren't you? Yeah. And you can see the little, little wax. And you can feel it as you brush it out. Like this is really sticky and slow. And then this starts to move a little faster. And then I go drill softest. Because I think this is a little rougher than my hand. So I go drill softest. You're still getting stuff out of there. I see yeah. It. And then after the drill softest, I go to my hand softest and tip to tail. And I'm still getting stuff out. Is that dinner that's beeping at us? No, that's the fire alarm. <laughs> From dinner? Yeah. We hear it. Oh. Almost done. Almost. How was that dinner? It was good. What'd you have? A steak with a salad and beans, but I didn't eat the beans. That's one waxy, dirty skate. Yeah. Not dirty. Hogan didn't finish his job. He That's loved okay. me. We'll give him a pass. Do you think it's important to do your own skis? Yes and no. Because you want to know how to keep maintenance of your skis when you need to. But if you don't feel like you can put on that race soon, take them to a shop and don't mess them up. <clears throat> but you should be able to do your own skis if you're serious. I believe most racers should be able to. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Finally. Does that feel so good? Yeah. Whenever I get skis on, it usually means I can go to bed. Is that was what's going to happen right now? Uh, yeah. Dinner, ski, skis, dinner, skis, bed. Yeah. After a big day of skiing today. Yeah. Powder and steep. Yep. There's going to be those people that are going to be like, oh, no, he's not doing that right. Well, you want to know what? There's probably a lot of ways to do it. Yeah. And uh, I have you, my ways and they work. And you know that your way works for you, right? And you also, you're still learning. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm impressed. Thank you. Yeah. Get them ready for the road. Yeah. Put them in the straps and then ski bag them so they're not rattling around. And damaging the edges. How long is that ski, Wilson? Your GS ski? Oh, 180. And what's your slalom? 
156. My GS was a 176, but we found these. They have a little dampener in them, and they have a 18 meter radius. So, they're pretty nice, I like them a lot. How long is your Super G Ski? Uh, 188. I guess I forgot that you have to clean up, huh? Yeah. It's usually pretty easy. It's nice because I can clean up all my waxing and edging stuff while I'm waiting for the wax to set right. Thanks for the clinic, Wilson. Yeah, of course. I think a lot of people are going to really appreciate that. Yeah. You're quite an example for a lot of athletes, so thank you.